What if I told you that one of the strongest men who's ever lived and also the current deadlift record holder had an abnormality with his genetics that allowed his body to pack on more muscle than the average person. Well, the 2017 World's Strongest Man, Eddie Hall, recently revealed that he has a genetic abnormality dubbed by some people as the Hercules gene. Welcome back everyone to your number one source for learning about everything related to sports injuries and sports medicine news. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different and talking to you guys about this genetic condition that allows people like Eddie Hall to basically build more muscle than the normal person. Weightlifting and strongman competitions is just as much a sport as something like football or basketball, and a lot of people who watch this channel probably are interested in working out or lifting weights themselves, and personally, I just think this is a pretty interesting topic. We'll talk about the genetics of this condition and sort of physiologically what's actually going on to cause so much muscle to be built up in these athletes. We'll touch on some implications these findings have had on the fitness industry and bodybuilding supplements. And then finally talk about some really cool implications that this type of condition could have on treating conditions like muscular dystrophy. Make sure and go subscribe if you like this type of content and want to stay up to date with my future videos. Let's get started. Now, for anybody who hasn't seen, Eddie Hall is an absolute freak of nature when it comes to strongman competitions and weightlifting. He won the 2017 World's Strongest Man competition and currently holds one of the world records when it comes to deadlifting, pulling an insane 500 kilograms and forcing a bunch of blood vessels in his body to pop and get these nosebleeds and pass out. Now, despite all the efforts that bodybuilders will go to in order to pack on as much muscle as possible, our body has natural built-in limits to prevent us from building too much muscle. Brushing aside the general just size limitations of packing so much mass onto someone's frame, if you have too much muscle, you can build up these imbalances between the effects on the bones and other systems in your body to where your body just can't support that much muscle. Our body does this with a specific protein called myostatin. It's specifically a protein that acts on a receptor near the muscle cells, and whenever this is triggered, it basically puts the brakes on producing more muscle fibers. Myostatin also inhibits an enzyme that, when it's active, causes muscle hypertrophy, which means muscle growth. So myostatin acts in two different ways to limit the amount of muscle on our body. It prevents the production of additional muscle fibers, and it also prevents those muscle fibers from getting too big. The specific gene that gives our bodies the instructions on how to make this myostatin protein is called the MSTN gene, and this is where we come back around to what's going on with Eddie Hall. Mutations in this MSTN gene causes your body to produce lower levels of myostatin. You can probably then guess what happens if you have lower levels of this protein preventing muscle growth, you allow for more muscle growth. Now people with this genetic condition aren't gonna have twice the amount of muscle as somebody without it, but it certainly gives their body an advantage when it comes to producing and growing muscle fibers. Overall, this is a really rare thing, particularly in humans. Probably the most common example of this that you might have seen are these Belgian blue cattle, which are these huge, just ripped looking cows essentially, that have this genetic abnormality that causes them to have sometimes up to about 40% more muscle than those without it. The first documented case seen in a human was recorded back in 2004 and published in the New England Journal of Medicine about a German boy who they discovered this condition in and ultimately how they found this gene. The first American with this was documented back in 2007 and in this case they actually had a deficiency in the receptor that the myostatin acts on to cause all these changes. As you might guess, anytime there's a discovery about a protein that has some effect on muscle growth, the fitness and bodybuilding industry is gonna look at it to try to see if there's some sort of supplement or way this can be modulated to get some effect. The anti-doping agencies have banned any sort of myostatin inhibiting products, but that of course doesn't stop these products from making their way onto the market. One particular product that's marketed a lot is something called folostatin, which is a compound that basically attaches to and blocks the function of the myostatin that's already in your body. And the production and use of these is all a little bit unknown and sketchy at this point, so definitely not something that I would ever recommend somebody go and use. But it's not just the fitness industry that took notice whenever this discovery was made. There's a number of genetic conditions such as muscular dystrophy that cause profound muscle loss throughout a person's body and can limit someone's life. So there's hope that the discovery of this gene and of this protein can lead to some novel therapeutics and treatment strategies for people who have these muscle wasting conditions to try to hopefully either reverse some of this or promote new muscle growth to help these patients out. Now I'm sure if you go and ask Eddie Hall if he thinks that this gives him some sort of an advantage, I'd hope he'd say yes, because even though he's what we would call heterozygous, meaning he only has one affected copy of this gene, not both, 
he still has some benefit in his body in terms of muscle production compared to someone without this genetic abnormality. Of course, there's no substitution for his hard work, his diet, his training, and all the time and effort he's put into this, but there's no doubt about it that this gives someone an advantage when it comes to building muscle compared to you or me. I don't think we can ever say specifically how much benefit it gives him in terms of the pounds he's able to lift or the amount of competitions he's able to win, but interesting nonetheless that we can now see that he has this and sort of put that in the whole context of his accomplishments and for all we know previous strongmen who have been able to do similar things. That's it for today's video. I hope you all learned something here a little bit different, taking a look at a different sport, a different sort of topic than usual, but something I think is really interesting. I hope you guys found it interesting as well. Thanks for watching. Let me know any questions or comments you have below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.